What's up, everybody? Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of CreditRepairShop.com. And in this video, we're going to quickly go over the affirmative defense. When you are responded to a court summons, court summons is going to re require you to, number one, re uh, respond to each allegation in the summons, which are pointed one, two, three, four, five, six, or however many numbers. And then it's going to require you to put an affirmative defense against you uh, being a, against the debt collector being able to collect the money against you, being able to get a judgment against you, whatever. Not to say that every time you'll win, but what I can say is that we've had a big streak of victories. It just, I guess I could say like... Uh, like how Golden State Warriors right now this year, they, or who, not, not Golden State, what about Phoenix, had lost, I think, 12 or 15 games, and they were like 50 games over 500. I could say over the last month, we're like striking 75 to 80 percent of these are being dismissed, or the debt collector is just, can't, well, I guess you could say dismissed. Uh, when they either go into court or they're just dismissed before they even go into court. And this is, this is the affirmative defense that I put together for my clients. And the reason why this is very important is because it's not like you're trying to run from the debt. It's like I'm just exerting my rights which in the video that I just made uh, the other day, which where we talked about, according to the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, that you have a right. Let's see if I can bring up that. Uh, yeah, right here. You have a right to get a, a, a debt validation, and that's a full debt, full Validation pursuant to FDCPA Section 809A, 15 U.S.C. 1692G. So you have a right to have that done. But I even go into more detail, and I'm using this one with Midland Credit Management because they have bought billions of dollars worth of debt over the last few months. With a B, this company is going out there very aggressive. And they're using Midland Credit Management, and then they have Resurgent, which some of the times uh, where they'll have Resurgent do the collection for them. Or they might even have another collector, LVNV, do the collection. You just never know. What happens is everybody's in the game, and they're all in the game to make money. It might even be just where it's like, hey, I'll take some in this area, you take some in that area. And we'll just split the profits. All right, so now, right here, the affirmative defense. Now, there's more to this, but it's just, this is the affirmative defense. This is the end where you're asking the judge to dismiss it because of these points on your that, that you want to make them aware of. Plaintiff co complaint has not provided document documents showing a contract between myself and Midland Credit Management, Inc. Number two, plaintiff ha has not provided any documentation that shows I allowed them to access my personal data, including the transfer of that data to companies shown in this complaint. If you had an attorney, if they had an attorney that they hired to sue you, you still want to know, number one, how who, who, get the, the document showing that the original creditor was able to share your personal data with Midland Credit Management and then link that over to the attorney that's suing in your area. What we've seen happen with this when we've done it is that the attorney in the area bagged out because they're like, hey, we I don't have nothing. I was going 100% off of what you said. I don't have none of this stuff. Well, you better get this to me because I'm going to bag out. So plaintiff has not provided any documentation from the alleged original creditor showing I allowed them to give access to my personal data without my permission. Number three, and don't sit there saying, well, how do they do this? How do they do that? The only way they do it is if you don't question it. The only way they get to do this stuff is if you don't question it. So question it. Number three, plaintiff, plaintiff 
has not provided a complete audit accounting of how the alleged amount of, and it, for this client, it was $3,270.54 was accumulated with receipts shown by signature. It could also be a digital signature, but we'll just say signature. These documents are maintained by the original creditor. Go to the original creditor and get them. If you can do what you're claiming you can do, if you, you know this amount is true, then you should be able to get those documents. Number four, plaintiff has not provided any documentation showing a purchase of alleged debt for a value of $3,217.54 showing my complete name and alleged account number. They always get this uh, XXXXX in the last four digits. Show me a complete account number. Maybe I had multiple accounts with them. I want to review everything to make sure that this is the appropriate account also show me the purchase agreement that you purchased it for the value of two thousand uh, three thousand two hundred seventy dollars and fifty four cents to show a true loss on your behalf to show a true loss on your behalf because they're claiming in a way they're just saying hey they're not saying we bought this as a dis at a discount everybody implies it but they're not saying it we bought it at a discount they're saying hey this guy owes us $3,217.54. We want our money. But they're not showing everything to accumulate to that amount of money. And they have to do that. They just can't come with some statements. Now, the next part here, number five. Plaintiff did not provide a contract between, and this uh, client, the original creditor was, Capital One Bank and Midland Credit Management, Inc., to prove to prove everything in the purchase of charge off debt is 100% accurate. This is something that people do not know, is that if they sell these accounts to the debt collectors, they will have in the contract that we don't even know if it's 100% accurate. And we just did a video, I just did a video two or three days ago where a lawsuit came about where the debt collector bought the debt from an airline credit card that went wrong, that the that the original creditor did not know that it was a, that the person was a victim of ID theft. They sold it, and on that contract they stated that we do not say that these are 100% accurate. And then later, after this person went through all types of stuff, doing lawsuits, had a judgment against them because they did not claim did not show uh, or had a potential judgment coming his way until the airline said, hey, Mr. Debt Collector, uh, it wasn't him. But they sold it to them without getting, no, without them knowing that it was 100% accurate. So we have right here, and we can say this person's name because they're signed as the uh, Vice President of Capital One Bank USA, uh, National Associate states that he is not aware of any errors in these accounts, not aware of any errors in these accounts, not to say that any vice president would ever be aware of any errors in these accounts because these records are not verified to be accurate and he does not specifically name an account on the affidavit of sale showing my name or account number. I should have said complete account number. Number six, plaintiff did not properly serve me with notice of this summons I found out by third party commercial advertisement. Not every uh, state cares too much about this, but in this state where we uh, did this one here, uh, service is required. Service is required that the person is properly served. In some states, it just has to be someone that's 15 years old or older that lives at that address. And then number seven, bill of sale submitted by plaintiff does not show the alleged account number or my name as part of any sale of debt from an original creditor. This is very important, this is very important. Now, your summons may have more for your affirmative defense, some may have less, but I've just given you some good ideas for you or your attorney that is working on a debt collection uh, summons for you. 
this is the information that they should challenge and that and this would be uh not trying to make a mockery of the court this would just be get me this information let us review it if you can't get it you need to go ahead and dismiss I want to thank you for your time. I really appreciate all of your time. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you like this video. Make sure that you ask your questions and comments. I'll get in there and answer as many as possible. Make sure that you go through my other videos. I answer a lot of those questions that you might have in my other videos. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com and watch the video, What Makes Us Different. If you have a debt collection, a lawsuit from a third party debt collector and you have at least five days we can write your summons response so you can go in there and not just walk in there with nothing in your hands we can write that response for you so you can go in there pro se link is below this video i can even uh, i even give you documents where you can do it yourself if you have debt collectors coming after you before it gets to the summons make sure that you grab my three pack of letters that to help stop debt collectors the link is below here, my statute of limitations letter, cease and desist collection activities letter, and letter. Thank you for your time. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the Credit Repair Shop.com. Until next time.